All right, let's see how this bed works. Now I have to take down the camera, the life of a vlogger. <laughs> Is this really what my life has become? Good morning. Uh, this week I'm reviewing this camera, the XS20. Oh, sorry, there's a train going down there. It's basically Fujifilm's dedicated vlogging camera. In my opinion, it's kind of like a miniature X-H2 in that it's like all shrunken down, but it's still able to capture a lot of good video with its, uh, it's got the same sensor in it as the X-T3. Now, the reason why I wanted to review it specifically this week is because I'm at uh, Singapore. I'm currently in Changi at the Jewel. The water's not even turned on yet. That's how early it is. And I'm doing a bunch of videos where I'm gonna need a little vlogging camera to, um, to basically do my job as um, someone who reviews flights, which I guess I do now. <laughs> Go to pointhacks.com if, if you wanna watch those. This is like really good. Yeah, I just thought it would be a really good time to have a miniature version of one of my favorite cameras. So let's see what it's capable of. And yeah, let's go check out Singapore. The Fujifilm XS20 is the successor to 2020's XS10. On the surface, it looks pretty similar, but there's a lot of little upgrades in the hardware and software that really add up. It's still equipped with the 26.1 megapixel X-Trans 4 sensor, which first appeared in the X-T3, but also in the X-T4, the X-S10 before it, and even the highly coveted X-100V. That's a lot of really good cameras it's joining the ranks of. I still use the X-T4 all the time. It's actually filming this right now, but it's the processor that ups the game of this camera. It rocks the same chip as the X-T5 and the X-H2 cameras. This unlocks 19 total film simulations, better autofocus, including those subject detection options, better battery efficiency, and better video specs. Yeah, this little camera is capable of F-Log2, 6.2K 10-bit open gate recording, or even 6K RAW through a monitor. This little camera can do all that. Throw in everything you'll need on the body, USB-C charging, 3.5mm jack, headphone jack, HDMI port, unfortunately micro, but I'll pay it, it's quite a small camera, a flash, what? Not even the flagships have a flash. Anyway, throw all of this together and you've got a phenomenal camera for creators at any skill level. Given you can find this for around $2,000, I think that's really good value for this camera. But let's just hold our horses. What's it actually like to use? Okay, day two here in Singapore. Uh, I don't know what's going on with my hair, but I'll roll with it. Much bigger hotel room uh, last night. We're in the city today, other than the airport and yeah, it's massive, love it. The view is also beautiful outside. Beautiful garden city, sunrise is just coming up. But yeah, after a day of using this thing, I had a really good time with it. I like how small it is. It's a really great travel camera. Um, I don't love the lack of buttons compared to the X-H2. There are just some buttons like the autofocus switch and uh, the couple of extra D-pad buttons available on the uh, more expensive cameras that I just absolutely needed access to yesterday. So I had to swap this out. But when we were walking around the city, that was good. Uh, it was good to just have this hanging around my neck and just being able to pick it up and film stuff as quickly as possible without it having to weigh me down as much as one of their bigger cameras. The camera does have four custom modes you can access using the PASM dial, and I think this would be the best way to operate this camera given the lower number of physical inputs. If I was using this more long-term, I'd set up all those custom modes with the settings that I think I need most and then refine them over time. Other thoughts, I love that it uses the same batteries as Fujifilm's more high-end cameras. That was really useful when I was uh, having to swap batteries over. I have a stack for the X-H2, so this was really good for that. Those batteries are actually almost double the previous battery of the XS10 model, uh, which is pretty great. I honestly didn't think about the battery once with this thing. I did use it a fair bit yesterday and I only dropped like one bar, so I'm, I'm pretty happy with that. One thing I haven't really loved is the EVF on this thing. It's lower in specs across the board compared to some of Fujifilm's higher end cameras and it really makes a difference, at least to me, when I'm trying to compose a shot. I, I get my eyes tested, I know they're good. You have gotta look after these babies, they're, they're the money makers here, um, but I I, I just cannot, for the life of me, really, really get into a groove with the EVF on this camera, which is a real disappointment. It's not absolutely killing the camera, but it was immediately noticeable. And even after using it for a full day, I'm still struggling to take good shots with it, which is which is kind of a shame. Anyway, I'm now horrendously late to get back to the airport. So um, time to pack up all this and uh, <laughs> uh, get back to filming. The 
rest of the Singapore trip included more filming at Changi Airport, another lounge tour, and as part of my first class flight review, I got to use one of Singapore Airlines' most exclusive lounges, including this nap room, where I realized just how handy the XS20's weight is. Yeah, so this is the sort of thing that I love this camera for. It's It's got the quality of a lot of my favorite flagship Fujifilm cameras, but they're always a little bit too heavy. But this one, especially with this lens, it just, look, you can hang it on the wall like this. Like, how good is that? Before long, it was time to fly in my very own private room with a fold-out bed and lots of food and champagne. This this was crazy. Uh, but the XS20 came in absolute clutch again, especially when paired with that ultra-wide 8mm 3.5 lens that actually released the same time this camera did. It was just able to showcase and capture the entirety of that suite really efficiently and really well. If you want to see that whole video and learn what you can expect on the flight and how you can book it using points, it's actually a lot cheaper than you would think if you use frequent flyer points, then head to the Point Hacks YouTube channel and hit subscribe. The video will be coming out there soon. I actually run that YouTube channel now, so have a look around. Let me know what you think and yeah, see what I get up to when I'm not reviewing cameras. All right, I'm back. I've traded the sweaty Singaporean summer for the arse end of Melbourne winter. Although it is actually quite a nice day out today. The sun is shining. I think it's going to be a nice day. Um, there were two things I didn't get to when I was using this to film in Singapore because yeah I was too busy filming. The first one is vlog mode. I'm actually using that right now to record and if you're thinking it doesn't really look that different to the rest of the video you'd be right. It's essentially another custom mode just for video. The major difference are these larger touchscreen settings so you've got access to those while you're filming yourself and three vlog focus settings that are switched on by default. So the first main setting is this red box that appears when you hit record. Uh, absolutely vital for making sure that you've actually hit the record button when you start recording yourself. Love that. The second is background defocus mode, which maximizes your ability to get a blurry background. So it doesn't quite work like portrait mode in phones where it's artificially blurring the background behind you. This just makes sure that the lens aperture is open as far as possible. And that's how you get that blurry defocused effect. See how it's yellow? Uh, that basically means it's gonna stay open as possible uh, depending on the lens. So if you've got a lens with like 1.8, it'll stick to 1.8 to make sure that the background is completely blurry, just like this shot. There we go. <laughs> While it is a neat feature for newbies who are just learning the basics of cameras and maybe don't want to have to deal with all the settings while they're vlogging, it does have a very real problem and that is absolutely overexposing everything because your aperture is way too wide open. So you really need to keep an eye on your other settings anyway if you're going to use this. I turned it off straight away. Um, yeah, it kind of defeats the purpose of an auto mode. And then there's product priority mode, which basically does what it says on the tin. It prioritizes products over the human face when you hold it out in front of camera and then it goes back to the human face when the product's out of there. Now those first two options they're available on any video mode but for some reason product priority mode is locked to vlog mode which I don't love. I, I feel like I should be able to put it in my custom modes if I want to but I guess it is a it is an easy way to make you use the vlog mode on this camera. Also I know I sung the praises of this lens for the plane coverage but I tell you what it is not kind to the human face. I do not need to enhance the size of my nose anymore. Thank you very much. <laughs> Look at this. The second thing I didn't get to do much of was photos and unsurprisingly when paired with some of Fujifilm's best lenses this thing takes incredible photos. With access to Fuji's full lineup of film sims or the ability to program in your own, this is a fantastic point and shoot camera for JPEG shooters, but thanks to the X Processor 5, you're also getting access to that better autofocus and reduced noise. Overall, images come out incredibly similar to other Fujifilm cameras with this sensor, and that is a great thing. It doesn't really improve on the XS10's photography capabilities beyond that though. The shutter speeds are unchanged, but the upgraded processor does give you more of a buffer if you're taking heaps of photos really quickly. While I was wandering and taking photos, I found myself wanting to go to Altona Beach, just west of Melbourne. Eight years ago, I still lived in Perth, and to be honest, it was kind of lost in life. I'd come to visit Melbourne and was staying here. I spent a day just hiking along the coast. I actually came across a box right on this hill that had a pen and paper, and it simply asked, what do you wish for? I wrote down something pretty universal. I wish I could do what I love every day. I did try vlogging my feelings on this, by the way, but 
Okay, let's move that over. <laughs> anyway, after the trip to Singapore, I found myself reflecting on how far I'd come in those eight years since I'd first come to this beach. Getting to make YouTube videos about luxury travel and cameras I like is pretty much that wish come true, right? Not to mention all the amazing stuff I've gotten to do in the years prior to that. And it's all because I picked up a camera and decided, yeah, this is what I want to do. Now, why am I telling you all this? Well, number one, I just wanted to show you 6K open gaze. Look at that, it's cool, right? Number two, doing this review and using this camera kind of reminded me of when I started doing this at all and using cameras in general. I didn't buy the best camera, but I bought something that was close and one that could use all the lenses that I knew I would want if I were to upgrade it down the track. I can totally see this being that camera for someone who's starting out now. When you first buy it, maybe you just want to stick to the auto modes, but as you grow, the camera grows with you and there's enough power and quality in here that you can start taking it to gigs if you start getting it. Then maybe you progress up to more video, you start using F-Log2, maybe you buy a microphone and pop it into the top. Maybe you plug in that fan attachment. All of that is possible with this. And once you're more established or earning more money, that's when you can step up to the higher spec flagship cameras. But really only if you feel like, yeah, maybe I need those few extra little features that they have. Anyway, that's it. Subscribe for more camera reviews. Subscribe to Point Hacks for plane reviews. And thank you very much to Fujifilm for sending over the XS20 in the first place. Also, if you want to know about one of my favorite cameras from Fujifilm, one that I ended up buying, uh, I'm filming on it right now. Watch that video here. I'll see you over there. <laughs>